Hello everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the event system in Zojo, or at least giving you an overview of what we mean when we talk about events. Now, events underpin pretty much everything in a Zojo application, because Zojo is what is known as an event-driven application. So when you make an application in Zojo, Really, what you're doing is you're writing code that responds to certain things that happen to your app, certain events. So things like a mouse uh, action, a key being pressed, the application switching between being the front or rearmost application, um, and a myriad of other uh, complicated things that might happen, a button being clicked, a menu being selected. These are all events that are fired or raised by Zojo that you can write code within to do something to make your app unique. So I'm just going to talk through um, some of the common events that will get used in many of your applications, uh, but you will be free to create your own events in objects and classes that you make later on that we also will obviously need to cover. Um, but for the time being, we're just going to crack open a new desktop app, which we've done before. I'm giving it a name, but we don't need to give it a name. We're not actually going to build it, but force of habit. So here we go. We've got the IDE. We're familiar with how this looks now. We've talked about the different components and how we might interact with it. And we also know that this is a desktop app. And so by default, Zojo gives us three objects. It gives us an app object, a window, a default window, and uh, a menu. Now, we're going to just look at the app object. And we talked about how the app represents your app in an abstract way. So sort of global things that happen to your application are going to be handled by the app object. So how do we get our app to respond to something? Okay, How do we get it to respond to an event? What kind of events can our app respond to? Well, first of all, let's just run the app and see what happens. Now, no surprises, we just get a blank window. That's what we get by default. Nothing exciting. Quit that. Let's say we want to do something when our app launches, okay? Whether that's setting up uh, some data, um, whatever it might be for your application. How would I do that? Well, what you do is you select the object you want to implement an event for. So as I've alluded to, there are uh, events are uh, that. Uh, Different controls and different objects have different events. Some of the events overlap, some of them are different. Many of them are created by default by Zojo, and when you make your own objects, you can add your own events. Now, when we want to write code that runs when this event happens, it's known as implementing the event, okay? Uh, or specifically, writing an event handler. We're gonna handle the event when it happens. So how do I add an event handler? Well. Let's add one to the app object. I've selected the app object. I'm going to right click, add to app, and I can pick event handler. If I prefer to use a button, I can just do insert event handler. I think you can also do, no, you can't. I'm just going to try and do a keyboard shortcut. Anyway, let's add an event, add to app event handler. These are all the events that Zojo has uh, created for the app object okay, that I am free to implement if I want. I don't have to implement any of them, but if I want to write some code when the app runs, it strikes me as a good place to do it in an event on the app object. So you can see a list of them here. And here's one that looks promising, open. Okay, Here's the open event for the application object. And you get a very terse explanation of what this actually means. The app is opening. Okay. So that says to me that when my app first opens, this event is going to be called. Okay, so any code I write in here is going to run when the app opens. Similarly, we've got an event here called close. No surprises, any code I write in here is going to execute when the app closes. And we've got several other ones which are reasonably self-explanatory, activate, so when I switch to my app from another, let's say my app is running and I go to Safari and I look at a web page and then I alt tab back to my app to bring it to the front. The app has then been activated and any code I write in here will run. 
So let's go ahead and add the open event handler by selecting it, choosing OK, and then we're presented here in the center with our code editor. You can see in the top left corner, it says open. That's the name of the event that we're writing code for. And anything I type in here, any Zojo code I type in here will be executed whenever the app opens. So what should we do when the app opens? Now, obviously you can't just write English when you're writing. Um, programming languages aren't just English, but this is called a comment. Okay, it shows up as red in the Zojo IDE, and any words that I type after two forward slashes are known as a comment. And the Zojo compiler, the thing that takes your code and makes it an app, ignores. Okay, so I can write whatever I want, any personal notes I want to write to myself about what the code does, or if I'm sharing my code with other people to explain my thought processes. While we're on the topic of comments, um, Zojo supports three types. They're all the same, they're all ignored, and it's a personal preference which one you use. You can either have two forward slashes like this, a comment, uh, an apostrophe, sorry, and for weird reasons that are historic, you can type the word rem. I think it stands for remark rather than the uh, awesome 90s band. Anyway, so what are we going to do when the app opens? Let's do something simple just to prove to you that this event is firing when the app opens. We'll use a built-in um, method, uh, function, uh, built-in function that Zojo provides us. We'll talk about functions soon enough. Uh, that will just show a message box with a message that we tell it. That method is called message box. And to this method, I have to pass it a string. Okay, A string is a collection of characters, a piece of text surrounded by quotation marks. So I'm going to say the open event fired. Okay. Now if I run my app, what should happen is we should get a message box with this message. Now I can click run or I can use the shortcut Command R. So we'll run the app. Boom. I get a message box with the message we type, the open event fired. I can dismiss it. And lo and behold, there's my app again. Okay. So the event worked. I can do any code I want when the app opens. We'll quit that. What other events can we implement? Is it that easy to implement events on other objects? Of course it is. It's really straightforward. How about we want um, something, uh, an event to, right, actually, let's have a look at the events on the window. So we select it, right click, add to window, event handler, and I've got even more events that I can implement on a window because Zojo by default has many other events that can be implemented more than the app object. So we've got ones which are similar to the app object. So we've got open and we've got close and activate, but we've got a whole bunch of others. So we've got events which fire every time the mouse moves whenever the mouse wheel scrolls over this window. Not just when the mouse, so not just when the mouse moves in over the screen, but when it moves specifically over this window, this event will fire every time. Um, let's say uh, when the window maximizes, I want to show you a message, or when it minimizes. So let's do that. We'll add the minimize method, uh, minimize event handler. You can see up here in the left, it says minimize. Uh, so what should we do? We'll do the same as we did last time with a little message box. Message box um, minimized. And let's add another one for act maximize. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, maximize. Double click it to add it. You might be thinking, how am I typing so quickly? Well, just like on your phone, uh, the Zojo IDE will try to auto-complete what you're writing, and it's reasonably smart. So if I delete this, as I type message, if I press the tab button, it will fill in the gray letters as far as it thinks I, it, it can predict for me. And at this stage, I can see there's three little dots. So there's more it can guess. If I press tab again, I get a bunch of things it knows about. So I could put message, message dialog. What I want is message box. That's the method I'm looking for. So I select it, press tab. That's how I'm typing so fast. So we'll say Mac, uh, the window has maximized. Okay, so we'll run that. And lo and behold, our open event fires again. Dismiss that, there's our window. If I 
maximize the window. I get a window pop up saying that it's maximized. If I shrink it down and minimize it, my code runs again. It's that simple to add events. And that's really the whole crux of the um, life cycle of an app. So it's predictable what's going to happen to an app. Um, it's all well documented in Zojo's documentation, but an app will fire its open event first of all. Okay, it's the first thing that happens when the app launches, it fires its open event. And then if we click on the other events, it's going to fire its open event. You can see it's missing from this list now because we've already implemented it. So uh, you can't add it again. When the app closes, it's going to fire first its cancel close event, which gives you an opportunity, which we'll come to later in another video, to stop the app from closing. Maybe you've got an important document that hasn't been saved and you don't want the app to close. It is possible to override the user closing your app. The close event fires after the cancel close event because essentially there's no chance for you stopping your app from closing, but it gives you a last chance to do any last minute savings, saving, etc. of your data. Activate we talked about. That's an event that's going to fire whenever the you alt tab to your app. Um, and then we've got a few other ones. Uh, appearance changed only applies to Macs. Um, when you toggle between light and dark mode, this event will fire. Um, and probably the other important one here is unhandled exception. So basically, if you've made a goof in your code and your app is about to crash and you haven't um, handled that situation, then this event will fire and basically gives you a last minute chance to perhaps capture what on earth is going wrong in your app and write it to a disk, write it to a file that you could um, debug later on. Okay, so that's, um, that's a quick overview of the event system. Um, we're going to cover talking about uh, well, implementing our own events in our own classes and objects when we create them, because of course you're completely free to do that yourself. Um, it's probably just worth quickly looking at the Zojo documentation, because as you could see, when we tried to add an event, it was very sparse when it was telling you what the event does. So if you're ever in doubt, if you just go to help language reference, you get a window pop up, which is loads and loads of documentation about um, the Zojo IDE and Zojo programming language. And if we type um, application, okay, we're gonna get information about the app object, right? And it will tell us all the events that it implements up here. It also tells us about its properties and methods, which we're gonna come on to, I think probably next. Um, but for the moment, we've just touched on events and you can see here, there's an open event, which is what we implemented. If I click on it, it tells me it fires when the app is opening and there's some extra notes. So it's the first event called when your app starts um, and the activate event is called after the open event. So you can peruse these documentations to find out the order that these events firing and what they might be useful for. Always refer to the help documentation. It's really quite good. Um, uh, can't recommend it enough. Right, I'm going to leave it there, and I think next up we're going to talk about um, objects, classes, and controls, uh, which is a big topic. Uh, and once we've got that out of the way, we can finally get down to writing some code, and I can teach you how to write methods, properties, etc., etc. Um, I hope you found that useful.